Welcome back today with Palantir settling into consolidating at a nice range of around $175 per share. I thought now would be a great time to revisit some Palantir modeling. I've built this custom dashboard, which we'll be having a look at and tweaking the drivers and seeing ultimately where we land. And we're going to be doing a 10 year forecast here to be able to see longer term what the numbers are looking like. So this is going to be a great breakdown and let's just dive right into it. So here's how I have this set up. We've got a starting year and uh, for 10 years out for each of these drivers. So we have revenue, costs, capital, and taxes and valuation, which is the most important part for figuring out where the stock is going to end up. And we'll be able to have a look at the implied price based on EV to sales, based on price to earnings, etc. So this is going to be a great exercise to go through and I'm going to be sharing with you what I think is most likely for the fundamentals as well as for the multiple. So let's go ahead and get started. Revenue growth, we'll just leave it where it currently is. As for an out year, where do I see government growth heading to? I think it's going to be probably around 12.5. Let's leave it there. Commercial growth, however, I think we're still going to see quite high. Let's put it around 30%. And we're going to come back and tweak these because I don't know what the results are. So we're going, to, we're going to look at the results after we set the ultimate price. So the way this is calculating is it's saying, okay, in this forecast year of 2025, we're going to be growing at 43%. And then we're going to end growing at 13% roughly. So every year in between that, it tapers down to the end year. As for what the price change is going to be, what is the price going to be? So we just handled a volume. That's growth of commercial and government. But the actual price, how Palantir is pricing its platform, is that going to increase or decrease? We can leave it at 0% for a change in 2025, but I think we could see the price of products increase. Um, let's, just, let's just say, for argument's sake, 10% by the year 2034 which is 10 year forecast and again you could you could um yeah look at any exit year you want basically but i'll even just zoom in on costs here so we can see things a little better the margins which of course leads to the compelling rule of 40 that we've seen are going to keep improving and we could say operating expenses are going to get better with scale right operating leverage Stock-based compensation, I think, is going to come down precipitously. And let's have a look at net dilution. Do we think Palantir is going to dilute shareholders as much as it has before? I think 5% actually sounds about right. So I'm going to leave that there because as the market cap expands, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of dilution along the way. Uh, but nothing like how it used to be in the past five years. I'll actually just leave all of these remaining there. These are less important drivers. As for sales multiple, right, EV to sales. So our current multiple is actually super high. Let me drag this out. Currently, it's trading for, I want to say something like 112 times maybe, somewhere around there, maybe 120. So the question is, the operative question for where's the price going to end up is going to be what is Palantir's EV to sales at an exit year. I think we could see it something like a third to a quarter of what it currently is. For now, let's just go super high. Let's just say 40 times. But we're going to bring that down when we look at what, what comes of it. As for the, uh, the PE multiple, right? Again, this is also super high. This is probably something like 200. I, I would have to check, but... For now, we can say currently trading for 200 times. What is an ideal price to earnings ratio? I mean, this is an AI stock, right? So you would like to see it around 30 or 40, but I think double that is probably what's going to be most likely. So let's have a look at the income statement here, growing from 4 billion in revenue to 100 billion in revenue 10 years from now. Let's see what else is important here. We can have a look at uh, net income, which is our profit of one billion to forty-four billion. A real cash cow when you 
really think through the numbers here. And then as for cash flow, what what they're going to have so much cash over time. We're going to talk about this in the next video, but yeah, they're going to be just printing cash. I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Mobvoy. When I'm tracking earnings remarks, government contract chatter, and even Fed headlines that move PLTR, I've been using TickNote, an AI voice recorder. Here's how it works. I flip the switch to record and it gives me live transcription with live translation when I need it so I can focus on what's being said instead of typing. Afterwards, I can open the integrated AI called Shadow and ask real questions about my recordings. Summarize comments on margins and AIP pricing. How many times did they mention government? Or pull the exact quote with the timestamp. I get a clean summary and answers that link back to the audio. It's pocket size with on-device storage and my notes sync to the app and cloud so everything stays searchable on my phone and desktop when I'm writing these breakdowns. If you're in tons of meetings, interviews, or classes, it's a legit upgrade for your workflow. I encourage you to check out TickNote at the link below. Now back to the video. Um, looks like I forgot to figure out how we're going to actually calculate customers. Obviously, customers aren't going to be the same every year, but... Shares outstanding are going to increase, meaning there is going to be dilution. We talked about that, but only going from about 2.4 to 3.7. Consider that maybe we could maybe we could lower the amount of dilution per year. I think that would be a fair change to make. But uh, yeah, and I'm also assuming zero debt every year. So let's have a look at what this does to per share, right? So let me zoom in just so everyone can see properly. So you can see we triangulated actually pretty well. As I said, I didn't know what the inputs I was uh, actually putting down were going to yield in terms of a price. But our EV to sales approach, as we did the multiple there, yielded a $200 per share price. And our price to earnings yielded a $91. So, you know, take the average of those two. That's actually pretty close to where we currently are. So the question, of course, is where is it going from there? Not what it currently is. We don't necessarily care because we're investing for the future, right? And this is a very rough model calculations. It's not going to be precise to what the stock is going to end at this year. It goes without saying. So as you can see, these two approaches have a lot of positivity baked in for what the 10-year forecast looks like. So from an EPS basis, we see it increasing from under a dollar to over $10. Free cash flow per share, something similar, around a dollar to $15. And this is the kind of expansion you really need to drive the share price super high, to drive it to ultimately what we see here, which is $1,000 per share. I mean, it sounds crazy to say that, but that's what the numbers are showing. So I thought maybe, and of course I have the actuals here, which are trying to ground us with all of that. So I thought maybe we could do a little bit of a bear case now, which commercial growth is going to have to come down. Let's say that uh, government growth is going to have to come down. Let's say we are no longer going to be able to increase the price at all. So we're getting more volume, but not price. Let's say all the margins stay the same. So this would be super bear case scenario. Super bear case. The only margin I'm going to keep the same is actually SBC as a percentage of revenue because um, we're going to say it's just not really possible for that to even happen. So let's keep that. And then this is where things are really going to hurt the stock price if the stock doesn't trade for a super high multiple. So let's say, let's put it around 20 times. And then the price to earnings, let's say it trades more like more like a normal um, mature tech stock or something like that. Let's have a look at the impact on the price. Yeah, so it's going to look a little wonky here because because we really tapered down those exit multiples. But you only see it really reaching a $400 range, maybe $300 range. So that's sort of what the bear case is. And, if, and that's a, even in the next few you know, four to five years, not necessarily 10 years. In this bear case scenario, you actually see the stock increasing in the next five years and then decreasing after that, which is possible, right? But in a bear case scenario, you say the growth continues, but then makes sense the valuation is going to take a hit. And if then, if you want to be super bullish, because why not, right? Let's say everything's really, really great. And these are 
these are absurd numbers, right? But let's just get crazy with it. See what's possible. Let's say we're trading for 50 times sales in the in in the exit year, as well as price to earnings of let's just say 100, which is not unheard of, but of course super expensive. Let's see what this does to our share price. Um, yeah, so that puts it to two thousand dollars per share. So a 10x from two hundred dollars, and we're not even trading for two hundred dollars right now. So that's the Uber bull case in these numbers here, unless there's something else that you see. Yeah, we were, we were supposed to work on the dilution here. So let's say we end we end the exit year with no dilution. How does that impact us? A good bump of five hundred dollars per share. So there's that's where you can see the impact of the dilution is still pretty significant if they're able to drive it down to none. And you know that's actually that's actually a good point when you think about it because yeah, the dilution ultimately should be net negative, right? Because they're going to be buying back stock. What else are they going to do with their? What else are they going to do with all of their cash? So, potentially, I was very conservative, overly conservative about that, and it should probably be more something like negative. Like right now, of course, it's positive dilution, but over time, it should be, especially ten years from now, it should be negative. So that's going to make another impact. Yeah, closer to three thousand dollars per share. I don't think this is realistic. But that's the Uber bull case. And let me know if I should publish this website so that you can play around with it and tweak your own assumptions. But I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Until next time.